ultimately transform our entire organization, our organization, our organization, our organization, our organization. We never stop We never stop We don't speak each other. We don't speak I welcome each of you here in this summit, and I thank you for celebrating your essence with us today. Amazing day, everyone. My name is Bryce, and I am the founder of Hero Summit, a global event organizing company for educators and industry leaders around the world, which was founded in 2018 in Singapore. And also, I am the chair of One School PH, a learning management system company. Today, we bring the world to you through Hero Ed TV. I believe that the best opportunity we cannot miss is the opportunity to use our time to serve others. Serving may be done in different ways. We speak the language of service in various unique ways. One that resonates with me is serving through offering solutions to the challenges schools are facing today. It is my deepest belief that everything happens in school. We shape the future of communities and the future of the future through the institution of learning. Thus, when we need to be part of, thus we need to be part of this equipping schools to be relevant today and tomorrow. This episode at Hero Ed TV highlights a very important technology that is changing how students learn. That is the use of augmented reality and virtual reality. We are bringing on this conversation uh, as a, with, with a demo presentation of Viative Labs as it partners with FlipLearn, a learning management system of One School PH. In today's episode, we, we are here to offer some answers to questions such as, will immersive learning and VR replace teachers? Will this technology help students with ADHD and autism? How does it work in schools now that students are at home? We have invited the Chief Product Officer of Viative Labs in the person of Dave Dolan as our guest resource today. Also, we are very fortunate to have with us USEC Justado San Antonio, the Undersecretary of Curriculum and Instruction of the Department of Education. We will also get to know the officers and partners 
behind one school PH as they share their messages. I am enthused to see productive education leaders from our audience right now. Our friends from both the Commission on Higher Education and Department of Education are well represented today. Thank you so much. I welcome everyone to this insightful session on equipping schools with immersive and hybrid learning through virtual reality. To start off, I'd like to invite my partner, Mr. Nikhil Chopra, all the way from India to share with us his welcome address. Thank you, Bryce. Thanks for a wonderful message. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Nikhi Chopra, co-founder and president of uh, International Partnership at One School PH. One School PH mission is to equip the education institutions with the right tools, technologies, to, and programs to make the online and blended teaching engaging, scalable, and measurable. Our advocacy is no schools to be left behind. Working on this mindset, One School PH, Flip Learn, Learning Management System Company in the Philippines is excited to partner with Viative Labs, a leading provider of immersive learning solutions. Viative has been offering immersive learning solutions to the clients across the world in more than 20 countries, having more than 1 million AR, VR, man hours experience. The collaboration will enable all high school and senior high schools from grade 5 to K-12 and engineering colleges to partner with One School PH Flip Learn to experience the entire collection of 550 plus interactive STEM and engineering modules on Flip Learn Learning Management System or bundle with your existing LMS. With, exists, with access to STEM content and a complete solution for teaching and learning. We are excited about the relationship with Viative, which offers both web-based and a VR content with formative assessments, helping one school PH vision to change the world one school at a time. We, are we have exciting offers for the schools to make the immersive learning and technology extended to all. We look forward to serving your schools and higher education institutions to leverage the power of Flip Learn Viative Partnership to support your teaching outcomes and ensuring no students are left behind. Thank you, thanks for your time, and we look forward to the session. Appreciate that partner, Nikhil. Before we formally start, before we listen to more messages and before I call in our resource um, guest today, I would just like to run a poll to just like, you know, situate all of us. Um, I know that we have principals, we have presidents of different universities and teachers in the room right now. So I'd like to find out three things from all of you and please help us out uh, in, in knowing you better based on these three questions. Number one, I'd like to know if you are using immersive learning technology in your school at the moment. You may say yes or no. Number two, do you think AR, augmented reality or virtual reality can further support your student's engagement? It's a yes or no question. And also would like to know if you're using learning management system currently. It's also a yes or no. We'll give you a minute or two for this. Thank you. All right. Okay, and Polly? Okay. All right. So we are seeing a bigger no on the question on the first question. 
um, 98% says yes for the second uh, question, which is good. Thank you. And of course, okay, learning management system is there. All right. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Um, we have uh, we have our partner, our CTO. We're not going to be a tech company without this guy. Um, he's known to be our tech doctor and our leader for digital transformation. We've invited him to share with us his thoughts as we launch with Viative Labs uh, this particular partnership with FlipLearn. Richard Pudagilidad happens to be our CTO and also runs different companies um, and uh, currently the president of Lintech Solu Network Solutions. Partner Richard, please. Okay, Bryce, thanks. Okay, uh, good afternoon to everyone. So, uh, the, the day is really a very exciting day, no? So, uh, just just to give you a short background and in the insighting of of what I am now looking at is it can be the next paradigm shift because virtual reality technology can be used to enhance students' learning and engagement. So, VR education can transform the way educational content is being delivered. It works on the premise of creating a virtual world, real or imagined, and allows users not only to see it, but also to interact with. Being immersed in what you're learning motivates you to fully understand it. It will require less cognitive load to process the information. So I'd just like to give you what are, the, what are my thoughts on what will be the game-changing activities the moment you actually provide VR and and considerably is how we teach the students. So number one is that we can have better sense of place. When students read about something, they often want to experience it. But with VATIM, the VR, they aren't limited to word description or book illustration. They can explore the topic and how things are put together. And it also scales learning experiences. Technologies such as science lab are amazing. They allow students to understand how things work based on practical experience. And you know, I'm very excited also with the VR because you are learning by doing. It's a well-known fact that people learn best by doing. However, if you inspect modern education, you'll see how little learning actually happens by doing. So students are focused on reading instructions rather than them using it in practice. So we have to VR in education provide an experience anchor to the instruction. With VR education, learners are inspired to discover for themselves students having an opportunity to learn by doing rather than passively reading. And take note, VR is for also emotional reaction. VR in education makes it easy to engage students the whole time, making experiences memorable. And lastly, users are ready to embrace new technology. The first idea that pops into anyone's mind when they think about virtual reality technology is an entertainment experience. Many designers see VR as an extension of the gaming industries as well. It's true that VR has, has historically been dedicated to gaming, but things are changing. It's now focusing on the learning and education. So for me, we should actually, I mean, for me, I want you to pause for a while and then understand that in this pandemic, we have to understand the what are we doing to teach people and how are we doing to teach people and that's for me and that's encompassing and that's the meaning of beatitude for me my name is richard prodigal that the city of one school ph thank you very much bryce appreciate that insightful message partner richard this time around we are glad because our usec was able to make it happen for us let's welcome the Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction of the Department of Education, 
Dr. Justado San Antonio. Thank you very much, Dr. Bryce, for the privilege of being a part of this um, webinar on equipping schools with immersive and hybrid learning through virtual reality. Um, I really salute your um, dynamism and innovativeness in finding ways to make sure that the learners will be able to learn the competencies expected of them because our fellow teachers are fully capacitated with uh, the correct um, know-how and understanding relative to um, whatever it is that we want to accomplish. We know that uh, in this uh, very uh, challenging time, um, we have to uh, really enable our fellow teachers to use education technology in um, enhancing and in fostering learning for our youngsters and uh, making them familiar with immersive technologies would be uh, a very important step. And at the curriculum and instruction strand of the Department of Education, we fully support every effort to make our fellow teachers more competent and committed as, uh, yeah, as a strategy, considering that teachers upskilling and reskilling is an important pillar of our Sulong Idokalidad initiative. Let me reiterate that also among the challenges uh, identified uh, for teachers in this very trying time um, is the need for all of us to embrace education technology and utilize uh, education technology in making sure that learning happens in the classroom. Once again, my profoundest salute to your team, Dr. Bryce, and my sincerest appreciation and salute as well to my fellow teachers and other educators who have decided to invest time and talent in learning more about how to be better professionals, um, perhaps during COVID and post-COVID when we eventually have the so-called new or better normal. I fully believe that the new or better normal in basic education will be about um, blended learning, blended classroom, flipped classroom, edu educationally and technologically enabled um, systems and uh, mechanisms for uh, delivering the so-called basic education services. We will still have perhaps the regular in-class learning, but uh, as I've said, post-COVID, I feel that even at the Department of Education, we will recognize that uh, allowing um, alternative approaches for learning as no longer just an alternative, but a feature of the 21st century K-12 education system. Thank you so much, um, Yusek Dads. We finally call him that. He's a wor miracle worker and somebody I really look up to in, in this field. So thank you so much for making it happen this afternoon, despite the, best, the very best, very busy schedule. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's an honor for Hero Ed TV to be with somebody who has been teaching for 30 years and holds a master's degree in PISOL. And he has been part of this wonderful partnership with Vietti Blobs because after establishing an English school in Japan in 19, uh, 1993, Dave Dolan's interest grew towards using education to best serve the needs of students. He has worked uh, in the development of digital books, LMSs and VR. Rather than following the trends like app development and EPUBs, Dave has looked outside the box for real solutions, for real world. Um, and 
you know, from library subscription needs in Japan to bringing technology to small rural school in Kenya via inexpensive Raspberry Pi. The key is, is cost effectiveness, well produced educational materials, and viability. Dave brings that same approach to virtual reality. Bridging the gap between technology and the classroom will always be Dave's best focus. So, hailing from Canada and based in Japan, well, he got the best worlds, ladies and gentlemen. He holds the role of the chief of uh, the role of chief product officer with Viatib, ensuring that education needs remain the focus within the company. Ladies and gentlemen, our resource guest today, who would be helping us out, understand how we can all be into this immersive learning to virtual reality. Let's welcome. The gorgeous Mr. Dave Dolan. Dave, welcome. <laughs> thank you very much, Bryce. That's much too kind of you. And thank you very much for inviting me. Um, I'm, I'm very happy to be here and always happy to talk about education. And let me just uh, share that screen. <coughs> okay. Um, and uh, thank you all. I, I, I really do appreciate being here. And um, as Bryce has mentioned, I've been a teacher for about 30 years, and it's been a bit of a journey for me to get into immersive technologies. Um, I was a typical teacher, skeptical about, about the technology, and but I've seen the effect that it's had um, in schools and with teachers and students around the world, and I see that there really is something unique here, you know, and but there's not much use of having this unless we, we do have a problem that we need to solve. And part of that problem is that, you know, students, um, sorry, um, students may not be understanding the key concepts that they should be you know, through traditional means. Um, teacher, even in, in the best of times, teachers are sometimes disconnected from their students and disconnected from the learning. But especially right now in a pandemic, we know that uh, this is a, a unique challenge. And we do know that when you talk to students, what they really, really want is that real experience. And this is something that uh, Richard had talked about, um, which is very true, that, that this is something that we can bring to them. And that's one of the, the kind of key approaches with the VR, is that we do enable the students to have this authentic experience. Even if it is in a virtual world, it is authentic to them. And as teachers, you know, it's one thing to teach about relative motion, but it's another thing to be able to put a student into a train and experience that for them um, on their own. The other parts that you get with the um, virtual reality is the fact that it is distraction free, which really does allow you to to think about and and concentrate on that um, that idea, that topic, that concept that you're working on. It's also important that it is um, judgment free. So I don't need to worry about my peers. I don't need to worry um, if, if I'm falling behind that that other people will know that. It's important that the teacher knows that. My classmates to know that. And because it has this environment, it does allow, again, that, that focused concentration, which allows for a deeper connection with the concept and which, which gets into the higher order thinking skills that are really very difficult to teach and difficult to learn. So those are the good things that can be had with, with um, virtual reality. Now, I have been around the world. I've been in a number of countries and Every country is, is kind of funny because they all say that they're unique. You know, in Qatar, they say that, that they're unique and you don't understand in Canada, in South Africa. Um, but it's amazing that when you do get in classrooms, the engagement between uh, the student and technology, the, the interactions between students and teachers is remarkably the same. So, you know, and, and the one thing I've realized is that to engage students is almost never a problem with, with the technology, but sometimes the teachers need a little bit more. And for that, 
we really need to go to the research. And what's nice these, these days is that there has been a lot of research um, run about the VR and all of it is, is very, very encouraging and um, it points in a very good direction. So out of Stanford University, um, being indistractable is the most uh, important skill for the 21st century. And we know that students have a lot of distractors. There's, everybody has their phones, they have their student, you know, they have things going on. Um, it's nice when you can enable somebody to concentrate on what they're actually learning. And with the, the VR, we know that recall accuracy has, has been improved. We know that cognitive ability is showing also improvement. And that when used for language learning, um, not only do students gain a lot of confidence in being able to, to work through um, a scenario that if they go to the airport three or four or five times, now they, they feel comfortable to go and, and try that, maybe in English. Um, but also the gain that you can get in language learning is, is uh, more rapid uh, with the VR. So the, these are good, but teachers, we always need a bit more. So um, we know that oral performance is, is improved with the VR when you're using voice recognition, academic performance, um, conceptual understanding of physics, all of these things are, are greatly improved with the VR. So again, there's been a lot of research held and um, it it's, is encouraging. And then things such as uh, ADHD, and I think Bryce alluded to that a little bit, that um, the, the VR allows us to, to control distractors. Um, you know, the student, there are a number of students and the students, it, it's hard to get the numbers because um, some, some areas say between two and 5% of students um, have ADHD, some are as high as 10%. So it depends on how it's being reported. But we know that there's, there's students out there and we know as teachers, these are, are very often very intelligent students, bright, but they have a difficulty in, in controlling impulsive behavior. They have a difficulty in concentrating their, their attention goes away very quickly. So with something like VR, when we can control those distractors and allow somebody just to think about what they're learning, that there, there really is a very, very big benefit in that. So I, I want to talk a little bit about what we've done as a company and how we, how we've seen this and what we try to do. And the first thing is that, um, the modules that we've made are curriculum, curriculum aligned. And this makes it very easy for, for teachers to add into their syllabus. And in the STEM content, we know that they're, they, we have developed it to have three elements to it. So there are learning objectives, attention to a core concept, and then assessment. And it's also important that um, we recognize that interactive uh, it's, or in, um, connectivity isn't always reliable. Um, I come from Canada, I live in Japan. Um, in both of these countries, we, we have internet problems sometimes, you know, and, and you go to many other countries and, and it, it gets to be more and more difficult. So understanding that and ensuring that it could be run either online or offline, make sure that you know, the learning never stops. And that's, that's an important thing, again, as teachers, we've got to make sure that learning happens. And then it's one thing to connect students with concepts or students with ideas, but we also need to make sure that the teachers are connected with their students. And for this, this is why we've incorporated analytics to make sure that assessment being done inside the environment will also report back to an instructor so that instructors can identify at-risk students very early while also promoting that self-directed, self-paced learning, which really allows us that student agency, you know, which, which can drive ahead that learning. So a little bit about Vative. Um, we have created the, 
the world's largest um, library of interactive curriculum aligned education modules for the VR. And what that means is that we have 543 STEM modules in biology, chemistry, math, and physics, over 100 lessons in English language learning, and virtual tours, which there's actually 22 now. So we try to make sure that there's a lot there to make sure um, that students of, of varying ages in different topics and different subjects all have something to do because you know you you need a, a wide library because there's a lot of students and a lot of topics that need to be covered and we've tried to do that and even with the, the library we've created we know that there's more and more to do and we we are continually building upon that so a little bit about the analytics it's an, and again it, it really is about connecting teachers with their students and making sure that teachers are, are empowered by knowing how a student is performing. And so if somebody is falling behind one place, I don't need to stop the class and say, okay, whoa, everybody, we have to do this again. I can just take... Power on. Let's say stoma in, in photosynthesis. Here's what that means. And the two minutes I spend right there, he understands. And that is that is key because a, a teacher do, doesn't need to be and shouldn't be a technician in trying to set up a router and set up this and that and try to, um, try to create all, all of the parts that are needed. We try to make sure that we take care of all of that. So with the analytics, again, you can see globally with your class how um, my students are performing um, and then I can also drill down to see each individual student where they might have missed um, and how they're performing so if I have Isaac Newton I know I don't need to, to worry about him he's, he's, he's covered George maybe is having a bit of problem and, but I know where that problem is so last year you know um, COVID came and it was an unwelcome surprise, but it's the reality of where we are. And as a company that made educational content for the VR, we really needed to rethink what we were doing because students weren't in classes, uh, people didn't have those devices at home, and we really needed to make sure that everybody is still taken care of because we're not a VR company we're an educational contents company and we're educators ourselves so we need to make sure that everybody is supported so what we did was the year before we had worked with unicef and um, i think bryce had brought up a picture that uh, was was taken there and we learned quite a bit from that relationship about um, extending what we do to a webxr version and that allowed us to to um, convert the library that we have into this web XR version so that even when students are at home and teachers may be remote there's still that ability to learn they could have a, a, a laptop or a Chromebook and um, the students would still be able to to be in that virtual environment it's not quite the same as with the VR but but they can still control the environment it's still interactive. It still is that active learning that uh, Richard, you know, so rightly said is very, very important. It's not passively watching a, a YouTube video. Um, you have to be engaged in what you're doing and, and the student can control their pace through that, which is again, really important. And then finally, again, it's, it's important to make sure that teachers know what's going on in that environment. So um, just a little bit about language learning, just because there, there are a lot of ways you can go about this. And um, these are some of the elements that can be, that, that we get with, with the VR. Uh, it is distraction free, it gives agencies to students. Um, if you design it correctly, you have voice recognition in there because 
working on vocal skills is really important. There's a lot that a student could learn by, you know, maybe grammatical practice on the internet or, um, you know, increasing their vocabulary. But, but verbal skills or vocalizing is not something they can do by themselves, but they can with the VR. Um, it is enjoyable, which has to be part of that. Multimodal, you know, it gives that experience, and again, the data and, and analytics. So this is a, just a little bit about what we've done with the, the language, is that we've tried to create not just that scenario, but working from phoneme to keyword to key set to a little bit of sentences, and then on to conversations to make sure that you know, there, there has to be a learning path there, and we try to support that in, in everything that we do. And finally, um, a little bit about virtual tours, you know, that it's, it's important to be able to go places. And, and today, of course, is, it's very difficult to, to get anybody to go anywhere. You know, we, we just physically can't go. And so it's nice that we have an, uh, an alternative. But again, it's not just a simple image or a video, but it's important again that uh, a student be able to maneuver inside that environment, they control their experience, and they discover at their own pace. And they can learn something, you know, unique about maybe, you know, the, um, how the, the Statue of Liberty was painted, you know, about um, the different layers of the Taj Mahal. There's, there's a lot that can be done. So it's not just enough to go there and look around, um, but we always want to encourage that learning and a deeper connection. Okay, and so that that's a little bit about what we do. And I'd be, you know, I, I am a teacher, so I, I will say that, uh, do you have any questions? Right. So, okay. All right, thank you so much, Dave. Um, I'd like to, well, we're now proceeding to our question and answer portion. Um, I, I know that, like like the poll said, a lot of them are not really into it right now, right? We've been hearing about the immersive learning experience and all of this, but until we see it happening in our classroom, that's the only time that perhaps we can say we really have a good grasp about it. But the, the fear all the time, I'm a teacher myself, the fear is, Anything new that comes out, anything that technology would would do, like what uh, would automate, will it replace me? That's the fear. That's a common fear. Is this true? Is there basis for this fear, Dave? Um, as a joke, when I've, I've gone out and teachers have asked me, I've said yes, it will replace you <laughs> if you're a bad teacher. Okay. I know it's never going to replace me um, because what it allows is that. <clears throat> Um, I can teach 90% or 95% of everything, whatever is there, but there's some things that I just can't do. You know, I can't take my class under the sea to see plankton. Mm -hmm. I can't take them in, you know, out to the solar system. I can't physically take them inside a plant to understand about photosynthesis. Right. But I can do that with, with the VR. So the VR shouldn't be for learning everything, but it, it, it enhances everything that I can do. And so I think, and that's why I welcome this technology. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, yeah. I, I, I agree with you, but, um, sorry. Uh, right. Bryce, you're, you're, you're muted. All right, sorry. Okay, thank you, Dave. Apologies for that. Yeah, I, I understand. I'm not, I'm not yeah. <laughs> I understand, I understand. But mm -hmm. just a follow through, like how, how do we, how do we, prepare the teachers um, to at least, you know, be more accepting when, when technologies like this happen? How do we psych them up? See, I know that, and, and again, I have to go to Richard, you know, because uh, a lot of what he said was very, very true. And, you know, people have looked at this as gaming or entertainment um, and have that mindset. Um, and I understand why, because in a lot of ways it's been brought out that way. And the, the problem in this, you know, um, sector has been that there, you know, teachers have said there's no content. Yeah. And some have gone out, and you, your poll, it was about almost 50-50, that 
some people have tried something or they haven't. And I, and I can guarantee that the ones who tried have said, you know, there's just no content. Um, you know, there's, there's great experiences. You can do one or two things and maybe five, but that's the problem is that people have, have, have um, put the emphasis on the device and that experience, but haven't thought out or thought through what's needed on the educational side. And on the educational side, we know it's always content. And then we, we also know that you have to connect the teacher with that learning. And that, that hasn't been done in other areas. So um, that's why I think there hasn't been that uptake so far. I understand it. I would be exactly that teacher, but I, I would also be encouraged when I see something like BE um, because it's, it's, it's getting to the things that I would actually need. Good. Um, this is my, my concern. ADHD and, and, you know, kids learning with these special, special needs. One of my daughters is actually in that spectrum. So how would, how would VIA Team Loves or how would this kind of uh, technology assist and help kids with special needs? Yeah, and, and it really is um, encouraging because you know there there's a uniqueness in this and i think it's a great leveler because um the two weeks ago i spent time with with a student who has cerebral palsy mm -hmm. and is in a wheelchair and uh it was the first experience for him to to have uh with the vr and for him he can't he can't imagine that he could go to the taj mahal and he can't imagine that he could easily um, do some of these things um, but this is the way that um, allows me to help open up Tsubasa's world his name is Tsubasa he's a Japanese student um, and I've known Tsubasa for at least a dozen years mm -hmm. right so um, and then on the other the other side as I say with with ADHD um, you know I've I, I've seen teachers be a little bit exasperated, you know, that, you know, I, I, I know I can, I, 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 this is a really good student, I know it, but it's, it'll drive me crazy, you know, like there, there's a little bit too much action, there's a little bit too much, um, you, you want to ignite that mind, but you want to get that person into something that is controllable. And that is why with the VR, um, there's a number of things, because we, we control what the, the environment is. We control the distractors. Um, we allow for that deeper level of, of understanding, or maybe not understanding, but a deeper connection with the material. And students really love to be in this environment. So you don't have to try to convince a student to maybe sit down and read a book or sit down and do this. You allow them to, to go into an environment which they enjoy, and then you, 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 you really ignite that learning at that moment that's right yeah so there's hope right there's hope for these special kids very good yeah. yeah i i hear dave i also hear a lot about vr devices uh the you know what what's the difference and what's the best one to use yeah and that's all power on you know, different devices for different uses, but um, there there's two main different uh, different sets of mm -hmm. devices. Okay. There's what we call a three DOF and a six DOF. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what that means is three degrees of freedom. Okay, so you can turn, you can move around, you can move up and down, um, and then there's six degrees of freedom or six DOF, and that's where you can move inside the mm -hmm. environment up and down as well right. and so we often equate the six off or that that one with the increased motion movement as maybe being better mm -hmm. but the problem is with education you don't want the students moving around a lot you want them here right and um, quite often the devices are really good like most of the devices you can buy if it's an oculus or if it's a pico mm -hmm. Um, and, and a few others, Lenovo has a device. They're good devices, but 
they were made for entertainment and they were made for gaming. So you really need to have something that is made for education. So um, we, we're not a device company, um, but we had to go out and make our own device because we had to make sure that you can control that device, the operating system, the mobile device management of that. So I can make sure that maybe this one student's, uh, you know, a, a little bit active and, and I, I got to make sure that he doesn't have access to the internet, okay? But maybe there's a good student like Nilam, okay? Who's, uh, you want to encourage her to do research and, and, and have a bit more access. So you have to make sure that you can, you can define um, even individually how that student can use that device. And so, um, and that's, that's why um, some people get stuck with that, uh, you know, reading a review and seeing that this is a great device. Um, but if you're using it for education, you have to be careful that you don't spend your money on the device and not think about what is the content. So just lastly on this is that we always think it's really important to start with the content. What do you want to do? That's where you start. You don't start with, I want to get a great device, mm -hmm. you know, and um, I'll just say that, you know, Netflix, I think everybody knows Netflix, you know, if, if I want to watch Netflix, um, I'm not going to go and get a TV first and then find out it doesn't play Netflix. You know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, this is what I want to do. And then I'll go and get a device that, that makes sure that I can play it. Okay. So that's my, that's the key takeaway is go to the content first, see what you want to do, and then get the device that's going to help you to do that the best. Thank you. Normally, Dave, when it comes to all of this kind of development, technological advanced, you know, systems or platform, there will always be a, you know, a, a mindset that it's only for the rich. It's only for those who can afford the well-off schools and the well-off students. And the, those who are not as privileged would always be left behind. How did Vietive uh, consider, you know, supporting the education as an industry considering both the haves and the have-nots yeah and 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 that's a good question as well because um if it if you can't afford it then it's not really something that can be said to be edu you know available for everybody right. or um and again we come back to richard's words that you don't want to leave anybody behind because that's that's exactly our mindset as well. We had to make sure that, and that's why it's available online and offline to make sure that a place that, that has connectivity issues can still get it. Um, it has to be available on a, on maybe a, a simpler device, you know, so you don't need the most expensive one. So you have a device that, that you, can, you can actually get to. And we wanted to make sure that we made a, a library of content and put it at a price that would be available to really any school in any country. Because, um, you know, I mean, we're in India and we're in Kenya and we're in Colombia and Mexico and, you know, and then also Canada, the US and, and other countries as well. So we we wanted to make sure that we can be in, in every tier, right. tiered country and make sure because Otherwise, we, we haven't done our job and because we've only made it available for one segment and that would never be, that would never be acceptable to me. Right? Mm -hmm. And so it is about finding a way to be able to make it available and keep it at a price. And I, you know, when, when I do talk, I'm not going to talk about price right here, but when I do talk about um, anywhere, mm -hmm. it comes down to a cup of coffee. So. And in different countries, it's different, you know, different levels. So in, um, in one country, it might be a cup of coffee in a semester, you know, and it's for one student, one cup of coffee. That's what the price is. In some areas, it might be, be a cup of coffee in, for a year, you know, and, or for a cup or for a month, right? So um, we have a little bit different pricing in different areas, but it really does come to a cup of coffee. So mm -hmm. you take your choice. Do you want to give that? student let's say a cup of coffee in in a semester or would you like to have them have access to this entire library mm -hmm. 
Good, good. I, I like what you said when you said that um, if it wasn't really, con if it did not really consider uh, a, a, the, the poor, you know, to, um, accommodating them for this, then it's yeah. not going to go well with you. I think I like that. <laughs> I like well, that I, part. I right? wouldn't be satisfied. And, and yeah. it really, we failed if, yeah. if, if that's the case. That, it, that we, we can't get to every student. Yes, it has to be like that. One School PH, Dave, uh, as we partnered with Viative, has that um, mission, letting no school be left behind. Because our mission is transforming the world one school at a time or helping them change one school at a time. And when we started this company, me and my partners thought of, you know, working it out, coming up with something that would really address the masses because that's where that's where the help is mostly needed, actually. So that's good. And, and I'll tell you that that was the one of the kind of defining parts and, and encouraging parts to partner with One School PH. Mm -hmm. Thank that you. you. You know, you have the same, the same vision, the same thoughts, and it's always really nice when you find the right people to have that right fit with. Oh, exactly, exactly. And we, we love Viative in, in, you know, in helping us speak out with, with better voice because of, of your platform, given the price, given the quality, and given all of the research that came with it. So, wonderful. Anyway, um, I still have two questions here, but I'd like to call... Uh, for more interaction, Con this is a conversation. Uh, if, if we have from our audience, anyone who is wanting to ask question, you either can raise your hand and we can, we can allow you to talk or you can just um, type in the chat box so that this conversation will be about you. It's not just about me and Dave, <laughs> right? This will be about you. So help us out with your questions. All right, Dave. Um, teachers and parents might be concerned about developing minds and children's eyes in a VR. What do you What do you have to say about this? Well, see, you know, I'm I'm I've been a teacher for a lot of years, and I'm a father of three, so it's it's going to be on my mind as well. And from the start, it was, and so we we haven't really made something for the very very um, young grades, and that's partially because of of that, you know, the closeness of the, the screens to the eyes. Um, and we did design that each experience would be, um, you know, around 10 or 15 minutes because you don't want to put somebody in that environment for too long. And you want to make sure that you use the environment, not just to be, you know, wow, this is great, mm -hmm. but it is about getting to um, a, a part of the learning that you, you need to get to and so it helps drive that quicker and it just means that um, you have a, a shorter time in the environment and you know that has to do with again young eyes and, and young minds that you want to make sure you 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 know attend to what you need to and then move it out and move it on to somebody else so that's why we, we made our modules in a shorter length um, and we don't tend to make for too young because, um, you know, there, there is still some concern in that way. So, you know, most of what we've done is for maybe uh, 10 or 11 year olds and up, right? Right. Not too young, right? I, I, I believe it's like from grade six onwards, is it? Yeah, in some or country, younger, yeah. countries, it is as young as grade four, grade four, grade five, which could get to about the nine or 10, ten year old, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, it depends on the country and what they're what they're teaching, uh, but the the far majority of what we have is mm -hmm. is that uh, you know eleven and up, but right. and really weighted toward the 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds. Right? right. Good. I have a question here from Miss Martis Bobis. She's asking what are the requirements like devices, connection for this platform. As when she's sharing her experience. When she started with the online learning, devices are the biggest concern of the parents and even for the teachers. Yeah, they, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, and um, I agree, right? You know, um, you know, we're, we're at a little bit of a kind of a, a tough spot because mm -hmm. we have the content and we have, we, we need the device to be able to make sure that um, that experience happens, right? But we do understand that 
um, when you have a, a device and you're streaming content, it means that there could be lagging and there there can be some issues in there. And this is why we don't stream um, content. And so, and if you have a lot of content, you have to manage it somehow. So this is again why we went back and we made our own device because we wanted to make sure we could load everything onto that device and make sure it's, it's completely there. And then the way that we manage it is through the curriculum of that, lo that local curriculum. So that, you know, Bryce, if, if you're a, a grade 11 biology student mm -hmm. only, I don't, you know, you could be, um, when you turn up, when you put on the device, it'll only show you grade 11 biology if that's what the school wants you to see, right? Um, but Richard, you know, might be a, a grade 12 biology, chemistry, math student, but needs some re remediation with earlier grades. So uh, he's got wider access to the library and, and then somebody else might have full access. So it really, you have to give the power to the, the school and uh, to be able to manage, but you have to have the right device that allows that to happen. You know, otherwise it's, it's too much, too difficult to, to manage. We're yeah. all experiential learners, Dave, right? So, oh, that, yeah, yeah. Th this definitely allows our students to um, learn the way they should learn. I mean, especially nowadays, it, students are different. Uh, yeah. Unlike our, our era, <laughs> we don't, we're not talking about age here, but, you know, we're, we're good with the color drawing in the, on the blackboard and we're good with these things. But right now, you have to make sure that everything is animated or else we, we will just bore them to death. That's what I experienced with my kids, right? Mm -hmm. I cannot teach them the way I have been taught before, right? It has yeah. to be something else, right? Okay, Dave, um, I think we still have another question here. Let me check. All right. Okay. We're encouraging more questions, please. Is the goal to have all learning inside of VR? Is, is that the goal? And do you think this is a good idea, Dave? Absolutely not. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so um, that's an easy question. Mm -hmm. um, you know that um, the VR is, is, a, is a great and wonderful experience and, and it allows us to do unique things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I want to get into, let's say a, a combustion, internal combustion engine in a car to really understand about the pistons, I can take students in there. But there's something, there's quite a lot of things that there's no value in having in the VR. So it would be, um, it'd be too expensive and then too difficult to make mm -hmm. everything, you know, and you don't want to just kind of lose the, the specialness of that environment by trying to, to, to jam everything into it. I've had I've had teachers ask me about arithmetic, mm -hmm. you know, and and when they've asked me about arithmetic, they say, you know, do you have something? And I say, yeah, I've got something here. Here's a here's a pencil and here's a piece of paper, and this is your best tool, you know. You're you're much better off, and there's absolutely no value that you're getting um, having that in the VR. But when you want to dissect an eyeball <laughs> or something. You know that's where you you're not going to be able to do that practically, and and safely, um, you know, and in a controlled environment. And that's something that you should do in in the VR. So use it to its best capability, and don't try to, you know, you know, try to use it for everything. Yeah. Jo Joanne, uh, Jo Marie. Uh, you're muted. Again. Jo Marie. Jo Marie is asking. Um, you know, a common concern about connectivity as, as a main issue. Um, just to reiterate, Dave, will, yeah. will this be used even in a low Mbps or, you know, low bandwidth places? Yeah, yeah. And so that's, that's the beauty of it, is that um, if you have um, the right device, and let's say a creative device, you can do all of your learning completely with with no connectivity at all and the only part that's required to have a bit of connectivity is mm -hmm. to to get the scores back to the instructor yeah. and so yeah. it's a very very and those are just little kilobytes of information so you're not you're not streaming content 
but you're just getting that that little you know like yes and no and you know 80 percent right. and things like that you're getting those little numbers right. so um it's a very very light amount of information that goes back and then but if you don't have connectivity all week you know maybe your next chance is next tuesday right. um, the students would still learn they still have differentiated learning because you go in and put it um, on into your account and it retains the stores in the headset so tuesday if you get on the, the internet for, for 10 seconds all that information syncs up and and that's fine that's the teacher good. knows exactly what's happening wonderful but there's no dependency on on being on having connectivity. Wow. Oh, good, good. So you got all this covered, basically, right? Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. And and it was. I'll tell you that it was a more difficult way to go about it, you know, because there's there's a lot of easy ways to do things, and and you know, to, to be online all the time is maybe the easiest way. But mm -hmm. but again, you know, we come from a teaching background, and we know that that's not the reality. So it's important mm -hmm. that you you prepare yourself for that more difficult way of doing things. And then mm. that's what we've had to do right from the beginning. Oh, wonderful. I'll be allowing three more questions there before we call it a day. Nikhil is asking, how are schools implementing VATIV today through VR devices or WebEx are on laptops as students are not in classroom following social distancing? Yeah, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about you know, maybe maybe pre-pandemic, okay? Mm -hmm. um, right. just, just because there seem to be two ways that schools use, and um, one would be in in that model of kind of station work mm -hmm. and branching learning, that you know um, a teacher can say, you know, we've got eight headsets, you know, so this part of the class, go ahead, you're in the VR right now, go ahead and do Adams, you know, uh, this this group I'm working with on a poster session or I'm doing something else. So teachers allow for students to have independent learning with that, but the teacher knows what's going on. Right. And then some places, um, again, we go back to Qatar, you know, they, they might like to have full control over everybody completely in the classroom. Um, so that's also available so that um, the students put it on, the teachers can actually monitor what's um, what the students are looking at, you know, they can multicast this and monitor each headset so they know, you know, if a student says, it doesn't work, I don't know where I am, and just say, well, okay, just turn around, and, you know, that's where the, the instructions are. Yeah. So you can, you can use it class-wide, like that, if that's what you feel is the best way, or you can use it allowing the students to go and, and independently use, and that... That to me um, is, in my situation, would is the the better way because it'll it frees up a bit of my time as a teacher. So you can go ahead, and I know that they're taken care of, right? And I can I can put some of my time over here to these other students that maybe need a bit more uh, help, and then switch it around and and, and go. So um, and then s teachers are also using for um, for remediation. Or, or also at the end of a unit, let's say it's a unit on photosynthesis. Um, you know, so yeah, I understand, I understand. Okay, let's get in VR. And then, I'll, oh, well, that's what you mean by, right. you know, the stoma, you know. Whatever. So it really helps to solidify, you know, and, and we always like to say, kind of bridge that gap between knowledge and understanding. You know, because to do something, you understand to a deeper level, right? Um, and then some, there are some classes that are using it um, inquiry based. You know, so let's get in the VR. They they go, and you're saying, you know, I mean, you have to get, you have to animate everything for students to know these things. Then they have a lot of questions, like, mm -hmm. okay, I don't really know what chloroplast is. Like, what is it? Here's a book. You know, but, but they actually get excited to, to research that, to look into it, and and I think that it's a good way, especially these days, to ignite those minds mm -hmm. and then have have that inquiry based education where right. they're searching for the answers. Okay, so there's a lot of ways to be able to use, and that's why we tried to make it the way we did, so that we don't tell you how to run your class, mm -hmm. 
we make it as, as available as possible for you to choose the best way of, of learning. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, two more questions here, Dave. I'm going to like shoot it like as fast as I can. How is, it different, how is this different with current LMS used by schools? Can users and teachers uh, add content? How about contextualizing content with the situation of the community where the school is located? Is it okay. flexible? Basically, that's a question. Flexible in a way, right. uh, and, and there's a bit of a yes and no answer on that, um, mm -hmm. because we we have made this, and to be perfectly honest, uh, making VR content is really expensive, mm -hmm. um, so, so we we can't we can't make it so open ended that that you can do whatever you want inside, because all of those elements are really expensive to you know to make and then control mm -hmm. and 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 put together, so. Um, uh, sorry, I just noticed another question, but um, right. and I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> okay, um, so oh, I lost my train of thought here. Um, so I really did forget what I was talking about. <laughs> okay, you were talking about the device, Dave. But, oh, and the LMS. Yes, okay. Yes. Um, and so, oh, adding in your own content or right. or you know, changing that maybe your own assessment questions would not be possible at this time right? Right. but but um, again as educators we know that having this is really really powerful to to get up to that next step to, mm -hmm. to really see it but we know that the next step after that is that the students create their own and right. so that's why we are working on um, the ability to have a, have an, uh, a, a VR editor that you would be able to bring in and you could add interactivity to it Right. And probably in a few months we'll be coming up with that as well. So we, we do know that, that being able to build your own is always, you know, key. I mean, that, that gets you to the next level. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we're looking to, to add in. Okay. Right. Um, I'll answer the one question that just came in and somebody said about WebXR. Um, right. Can you play that on, on, on iPad and other devices? Um, that uh, I'll let you check with every. There's a there's a couple of answers to this because if you think about the iPad, and I've got one somewhere here. I, I can't remember, but you know, to have the interactivity, it's difficult on the touch mm -hmm. to be able to do that because when you touch it, it moves the environment around. But how do you drag and drop, mm -hmm. you know, something inside? So with a mobile device or let's say a, a tablet or phone it's difficult to have the touch on there but okay again we're we're looking for the best solutions we can if you have an external uh, keyboard with a trackpad on there then you, with that with the ipad you'd be able to uh, manipulate things using that so that webxr needs um, some kind of controlling device. Mm -hmm. So when you have a, a laptop or you have a Chromebook or a desktop, you know you've got you've got a mouse. Let's see, my a mouse and a keyboard, and that allows you to control. Uh, when you have the VR device, you have the, the controller. So when you have the iPad, um, if you have again um, uh, an external like um, a, an add-on um, keyboard with right. with a trackpad. That can that can allow you to do that. So there's a little bit of yes and no on that. Okay. Right, right. Anyway, we are um, giving everybody the chance to have a full demo of what this Flip Learn by Vietive can do for you. Um, I'm not sure if that demo uh, form is out in the in the box right now, but it should be so that in case you'd like us to reach out to all of you and show you what it can do and see if there's a fit for your need in the next few months, then at least we can both see how to go about it. All right, Dave, um, I know that there's a lot of a lot of um, query about, you know, compatibility and all of this. I think this will be answered as we, as we do the demo eventually, right? Your message, your message. We have educators in the room. There's a lot of them right now. What is Dave Dolan, um, you know, final take? On all of this, well, I just think that um, you know there there's a limit that that I can do by myself, 
you know, and, you know, I mentioned about getting inside a plant or getting in, in, into somewhere right. or maybe a, a hazardous place, you know, it may be with chemicals that I want to do an experiment. The, the VR really does a, enhance the, your ability and, and what you can do. Mm -hmm. And it's been remarkable for me to see the engagement, the, the attention that's given to it by, by students. Um, and I really think there, there's a, um, a heightened retention with this, but a little bit, I, 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 I'm a little worried about saying that because it takes longitudinal studies on that, but, but the indicators are really positive and um, show that, you know, that engagement and the depth to which students really get into this is really, really powerful. And as long as we don't leave the teachers behind, it's mm -hmm. one thing, don't, don't leave a student behind, but we cannot leave the teachers behind. And trust me, I'll make sure the teachers are not left behind, okay? Thank you so much, thank you. We'll try to answer the other questions offline. Um, we will not let, um, you know, end this session without getting back to your and getting back to you for the answers. Dave, thank you so much. I know that uh, you have allowed us a great opportunity to understand what Viative Labs can do for our schools here in the Philippines. And I'm just so happy to have this session with you for this hero episode, Hero Ed TV episode. Yeah. So thank Absolutely. you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. I'd thank like you. to thank all our partners from the Viative Labs. Of course, Nilam is here. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here, Nilam. Of course, um, Nikhil, uh, Sister Merceditas was here, one of our partner schools as well, the president of St. Paul University. She needed to leave, but she was here for a while. So thank you so much. And of course, our partners from the Department of Education, headed by no other than our Undersecretary for Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Dads um, San Antonio. So thank you so much. Mark was here a while back. Thank you. Appreciate it. We also have, of course, our board from the One School PH. Richard is here and also Nikhil. Before I say goodbye, I'd like everybody to meet another member of our board. Uh, we welcome Dr. Elmer Sarian. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Dr. Elmer Sarian. I'm speaking to the research and community partnerships of One School PH. And I'd like to welcome you to our activity this afternoon. Um, I'm really excited for you because you will be learning uh, uh, a bit about some learning methodologies or learning technologies that we might be able to apply in the Philippine setting. Um, uh, let me share with you a quick story. Now, this morning, I, uh, I, have, I have three of interns. They're undergrad, no, they're undergraduates and they are Global Social Impact Fellows from Lehigh University in Pennsylvania. And I made them work with uh, two interns of mine from UP College of Social Work and Social Work. And they are uh, working, collaborating together as a team on solutions for food security and nutrition in Mindanao. And I'm happy for this uh, generation of learners because there are far more technologies and connectivity that is available to them than at least in, in my generation you know? and uh, it allows them it allows us as their teachers to equip them for the complexities of uh, life in the 21st century you know? in their generations in their generation they will be you know, uh, professionals where by the year 2030 and 2040 and 2050 no, and they, in their generation, they will be faced with equally complex, if not even more complex problems than we are facing right now. No? Uh, and it's our job to equip them with the right uh, mental models and collaboration skills and uh, no, uh, confidence in their ability to solve problems. And that's why we as teachers uh, should be looking for innovative ways of equipping them, of stretching their minds uh, so that they can wrap their heads around complex problems, just like the one we're facing now, no? a pandemic on top of a recession, no, a recession on top of a pandemic. Okay, so I'm, 
I'm uh, happy that you're with us this afternoon, and I hope you will have a fruitful and learning-filled session with us. Thank you. So there you go. Thank you so much. We would like to run one more poll that's to ask you for your engagement. If you want to know more about it, we're asking everyone to, um, you know, give us a quick, answer to this question would you like us to reach out to you so that we can demo flip learn via dev if your answer is yes within a week go for it within two weeks or within at least the next month so let us know how we can serve you best thank you so much Okay. Thank you. We definitely will be reaching out to you because your problem is as important to us and hopefully this is the solution that we can um, you know, provide you as a means of service from One School PH. Ladies and gentlemen, I am just so grateful for you coming in here in this room for your, you know, paying us your time. We appreciate uh, our educators in the room right now and we hope to continue this conversation my name is Bryce I am your friend here at Hero at TV where we always say this is the platform for thriving so let us make that happen every day thank you may you have a wonderful weekend ahead thank you bye everyone bye.